What's going on everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you guys and breaking down the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade heading into the fourth week here of October in 2019. I also want to break down with you guys the overall markets, in particular the S&P 500 very quickly, and take a look at the futures which actually just opened up here about 18 minutes ago at 6pm. And by the way, every Sunday 6pm. Eastern Standard, the futures market opens, so you can see where is the market trending in general in terms of the overall market like the S&P, the Dow, the NASDAQ, right? You can also see the crude oil futures, gold futures, natural gas futures, silver futures, and get an understanding and kind of plan your trades for that upcoming week based on what the futures are looking like on Sunday. So we're going to be breaking all that stuff down. I hope you guys do enjoy this video if you do enjoy the video and find value in it feel free to go down below hit that like button and consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me and join our strive smart discord group chat and our strive smart facebook group all of those are linked down below in the description box and are 100 free of charge so guys let's just get right into it we'll start off here with the spx the s p 500 just to break down you know what's been going on over these past couple of days and if I pull up this five day five minute chart you guys can see the markets have kind of been consolidating really over these past couple of days other than this massive gap up here the S&P has been struggling to maintain 3,000 bucks you guys can see here we actually closed under it this past Friday at around 29.86 you know it's just been struggling at this level and if we pull back to the four hour chart you can kind of see the overall trend here is a wedge pattern we're making higher lows at the same time as we're making lower highs and that big dump that we saw this past Friday kind of solidified that level that we saw on the four hour chart as a lower high, which in my opinion is signaling to a bit more downside here, right? You guys can see it very clearly. 3,008 is where that lower high occurred and that big dump off on Friday, you know, we had about an 11 point red day, not too crazy, but towards the end of the market, like you guys saw that dump off again, solidified that lower high. So in terms of the S&P here, guys, and the markets in general, you know, I'm looking to see where are we going? Because if you see on the Dow here, and the NASDAQ, you know, all of these markets, you know, in terms of the three major ones that I track on this channel, they're all in this wedge pattern, lower high, higher low type of, you know, situation here where I want to see what direction we end up picking. Are we going to break out of this wedge? Are we going to maybe sell off and then break the support of this wedge, which would be bearish, right? Obviously, the breakout to the upside would be bullish, right? That's kind of what I'm personally waiting for in these markets and right now it's earnings season a lot of the big name companies large companies are going to be reporting earnings here starting this week a lot of big names and of course over the next couple of weeks so this is going to fluctuate the markets very heavily right what are these companies reporting in terms of earnings EPS revenue guidance growth year over year these are important metrics for us as investors and traders to keep an eye on because this this is showing us and telling us how these companies are doing, how are they doing, and honestly, how the overall market is doing in terms of the economy and obviously these individual businesses. Because if we see that earnings are weak, that is not going to be good for the stock market, right? If we see that from the major companies, that can obviously weigh us down here to the downside, right? Maybe we can even start breaking these massive support barriers that we see here, like 2950. Obviously, we talked about the support support of this wedge, right? If we break that, we may be going down 2880. Another major level is 2850. And obviously the level all the way down here is 2730. So these are some levels to keep an eye on. And obviously if we break up here to the upside, we may be going to that all time high at 3027. So you may be asking yourself, what are the futures looking like right now, Stas? We see these markets, they're in a wedge pattern. What are these futures looking like so we can get a better understanding of where the markets could open 
open tomorrow? Well, the S&P futures right now, guys, they're up a measly $1. Nothing crazy whatsoever. Sometimes we get massive gap ups. Sometimes we get huge gap downs in terms of the Sunday um, when the futures market opens. And other times we get nothing, which is one of those days today, right? Up a dollar, up 0.03%, nothing crazy whatsoever. But that doesn't mean that we're not going to be watching these futures. I'm watching these futures heading into the market open tomorrow, large caps as well. If they're trending down, that could be a signal that we may have a red day to start the week tomorrow. Let's say these futures gap up heavily. Obviously, the flip side would be in effect. We might have a massive green day, right? If we go to the Dow Jones futures, we can see they're up 10 bucks, nothing much. A measly 0.04% right now. That is nothing crazy whatsoever. The NASDAQ up 0.1%. That's the, the biggest move out of the three major indexes that we track. Up $8.25. So overall, guys, these markets right now, the futures, they're not really budging, but I'm sure that's going to change heading into tomorrow. And of course, these markets are going to pick a direction once, in my opinion, these big companies start to report earnings and we get an understanding of what's going on in you know in you know these these big companies and how the overall economy is doing you know based off these earnings and that again obviously will fluctuate the entire market so without further ado guys let's just get right into it now that I got that part out of the way let me know down below in the comments what are your thoughts on the markets in general are we going to go higher from here lower from here seriously guys let me know down below I would love to know what the community Community in general has to think right now. I love just collaborating with you guys and just bouncing ideas. I just want to hear what you guys have to say. So leave that comment down below. So the first stock, well, really ETF pair that I'm watching this upcoming week. Let me go to my inverse ETF watch list here for you guys. It's going to be natural gas, right? Nothing crazy um, in terms of difference here. A lot of the stocks I trade, they're very similar week to week. Natural gas, you know, crude oil, the futures. Um, and the ETFs that trade based on those futures, the ETNs rather that trade based upon those futures. You know, once you find something that works for you, you stick to it, right? That's what I'm personally doing. That's why I trade a bunch of, you know, the same large cap stocks and a bunch of these, you know, you gas, D gas, all that good stuff, right? So natural gas here, we're at a very interesting spot, right? We're trending between 230 and 238, right? You guys can see we got rejected at this resistance here multiple times in the past. 240 is also a level of resistance, but we failed to get above there on the 16th, so we don't really have to worry about that just yet until we break 238, right? But as of now, 230 to 238 is where we're trending. Very simple here on natural gas in terms of what I'm looking for. I think... If we break 230 here, and especially if we break that 50 SMA, which could happen, right? You see, you know, it's currently down about one penny right now, almost a penny and a half, down about 0.56%. So who knows? Tomorrow morning, if we start to gap down, we break this level, that's going to be a very critical break to the downside, right? And what do we trade when natural gas is selling off? It's D gas, guys. Ticker symbol D G A Z. D gas goes up whenever natural gas is going down. And if natural gas breaks that level, how much downside does it have? Well, from 230, it can go all the way down to 220, which we saw it do literally about a couple of weeks ago when it peaked at 240, so, or rather 238, rather, right? We sold off broke 230 and then we rapidly sold all the way off to 220. So this would be a best case scenario for the D-Gaz players out there. If you want to play D-Gaz, you want this to do this, right? If we end up selling off aggressively, that could be a very good play tomorrow. But on the flip side, you know, if we hold 230 and start to fill the gap back up to 237 and kind of play in this horizontal channel, which is, is really a possibility at this point, you guys is going to be a very good play because that one goes up whenever natural gas is going up. And we've seen 
you know, you guys has kind of been pushing these past couple of days. It's looking to do something here, you know, these past two days. So all we need to see is a natural gas pop here to 238, and this one's going to go something like this, maybe back into the $16 level, $15, $16 level at least. So just keep an eye on this pair, guys. I'm watching it with heavy scrutiny, scrutiny here, right? Crude oil is another one that I'm watching, slash CL, and we trade two ETFs that trade based upon crude oil, those being UWT and DWT. And very simple here, guys, crude oil, it's in this horizontal pattern. There's no really denying that, right? It's from 52 bucks up to about 54.50. That's kind of where we've been, you know, bouncing um, throughout over these past couple of uh, weeks. And we, we did over the past couple of months on different scenarios as well. So we can see here, this is looking pretty bearish if we zoom in a bit on on this crude oil chart on the 20 day one hour you can see this is a double top we got rejected at 54.50 roughly and we just got rejected again at 54.50 on the 18th of october now we're starting to push down so what's going to give me the go-to to trade dwt which goes up whenever crude oil is going down well it's going to be if crude oil breaks these moving average support levels on the one hour chart if it does something like this this if you guys can see that tiny little arrow that I drew, which I doubt you can, but if it does that, this can be gapping all the way back down to 52 bucks, and that is going to be a drop of about, let's say, 2, 2.5 percent, and since DWT is a 3x leveraged ETN, that means if that goes down 2.5 percent in terms of crude oil, DWT, since it's a 3x leveraged ETN, it's going to be going up at, uh, what's that level? It's 3 times 2.5, guys. Let's do some math together. 2 2.5 plus 2.5, that's 5, plus 7.5. So it's going to be roughly 7.5% move for DWT. Again, if crude oil does fill that gap to the downside. But crude oil to the upside has even more potential, guys. This is kind of what I'm hoping for at this point. Um, if crude oil breaks 54 bucks, let me get this tool out for you all so I can show you where we could be headed here. If we break 54.50, rather, not 54 bucks, 54.50, we may be filling the gap back up to 56.3 guys and you can see literally like five six times over the past couple of months we've done that we've popped above 54.50 filled to 56.50 then sold off we popped above again filled the gap sold off literally multiple times so i think if we gap above 54.50 uwt is going to be a massive play and even if we break above 56.50 guys take a look at how much this can run you know 60 bucks is the next resistance so think about it from 54 bucks to 60 bucks in terms of uh crude oil here that's a pretty big margin in terms of uh you know what uwt can do that's 10 percent from where we are now up to 60 um for uh crude oil if it did gap up that aggressively and again 3x leveraged etns that's what uwt and dwt are so uwt in that case since it goes up when crude oil goes up it's going to be up nearly 30 percent guys so that's that's really one worth watching here um in my opinion uwt heading into this week and especially if we do get that bullish move on crude oil so I know I talked about three swing trades in my previous video, but I figured I just talked to you guys about them very briefly in this video. And if you guys want to see a more in-depth analysis on these three stocks, just go to my previous video and you'll see them. But this first one is T, guys. Ticker symbol AT&T. Very simple. We broke 38 bucks, which was a resistance over the past couple of weeks. We gapped above it. Now we're looking to fill the gap up to the previous resistance, which is at around 39.50. 39-ish bucks. And at this point, guys, I think we're going to do that. We're well on our way. And there's about 2 to 3% margin left before we do pop, right? Or rather, get to that top. And I personally would like to see a pull down, maybe a retest on the old resistance as a new support. If we do get that, that could open up an even better entry here, which means we, get, we can get even more profit potential of around 3%. So this is one worth watching. Um, and again, if you want to see a more in depth analysis go check out the previous video but mind you they are reporting earnings here on the 28th so that can very heavily fluctuate are we going up or are we going down right so keep that in mind the next stock is pg 
Procter & Gamble, this is probably my most favorite stock out of these three that I'm looking to swing trade right now because it has the most potential for profit. And honestly, it's on an uptrend over the past six months. And if we zoom out a bit to the three-year, one-week chart, you can see here, actually, no, maybe the one-year, one-day, you'll be able to see it better. You can see from 125, we dipped all the way down to about 116. And we're overall holding this trend based on this trend line here at the dip we're at right now. And we're seeing consolidation. We're seeing a hold on the 115, 116 support. And we're actually starting to see a push higher here, which I really like. So this, in my opinion, coupled with a good earnings report, which it's coming here this week. I think it's on the 21st or the 22nd. It's on the 22nd here, guys. You know, this could be an explosion of a stock, right? This could be a nice dip where Again, if they get good earnings, you could be making 6-7% if we do get up to that high at 125 and even more if we break that high and push to a higher high. So PG, definitely worth watching here. What was the other one, guys? Oh my goodness, I'm forgetting. Oh, it's ABV, A-B-B-V. This is probably... I don't know. It's PG, AbbVie. These are, in my opinion, obviously better than AT&T right now, but I don't know which one's better, PG or AbbVie. They're kind, it's kind of a toss-up. Let me know down below what do you, you guys find more attractive right now. I probably would lean more to Procter & Gamble because it's more oversold. This one's a bit more overbought, but again, let me know down below what are your thoughts. But basically, this one is kind of similar to AT&T. We're breaking above a resistance, and now we're entering into the next channel here that's between 76.30 and around 81 bucks, right? And if we see on a profit potential, that is about a 6 to 7% profit potential if we enter perfectly here and sell perfectly at 81 bucks, which probably won't happen, right? Because nothing's perfect in the stock market. Sometimes it is, right? Your entries and exits, sometimes they go perfectly to plan, but a lot of the time they don't, right? So you got to understand it might not be 6, 7%. In your case, it might be 3-4% depending on where you enter and exit, but roughly it offers a pretty good potential here in my opinion and a pretty good risk reward um, you know, ratio here. And I think it's worth watching, right? And again, if you want to see a more in-depth video on these three, go check out Friday's video. It's about 12 minutes long, three stocks to swing trade into November. That is what that video is called. So let's talk about gold very quickly here, guys, slash GC, because I'm always watching gold in these rocky markets. Gold has been very volatile. As you guys can see, it's gone from 1200 bucks to 1500 bucks over the past couple of months. Now it's back down to 1400 this is flying up, right? Because at this point, people are scared that the stock market is going to crash, right? People are scared. You're hearing headlines, the trade war. You have Ray Dalio saying recession. You have a lot of these big name hedge fund guys saying, watch out for this, watch out for that economic slowdown. You know, the 10th, 11th year in the bull run now. You know, people are getting scared and they're putting their money in gold, which is really viewed as a safe haven and kind of a hedge against the market and a hedge against the dollar in the economy in general. So that is kind of why you're seeing this big pop here because as uncertainty is coming into the market, again, people are flocking here, which is pushing up the price. Now you're starting to see some weakness in gold. We're starting to fall down here. You know, the markets have been climbing up over the past couple of weeks. You guys can see on the S&P, right, over the past couple of weeks. Overall, the market's been trending up. So that means gold has been falling down a bit because typically not always but typically these move inverse to each other. Markets are up, gold's down. Gold's up, markets are down type of thing, right? So if we go back to gold, you know, 12 or not 12, 1495 is a critical level here that I'm watching. And you guys can clearly see we're up 70 cents right now. And we're right at that level. We've kind of been consolidating over the past couple of days here. And why am I watching it? Because if we break this level, guys, we may be gapping down to 1465 and we trade inverse ETF pairs here. I personally trade them. A lot of you guys do as well. JDST and JNUG that 
really fluctuate when GDX and gold are moving. And GDX, by the way, it's a gold ETF that tracks, obviously, gold, right? Whenever gold, or not gold, GDX, whenever GDX is going down, JDST is going up. So at this point in time, guys, and obviously GDX up means JNUG up as well, right? But at this point in time, if we look at GDX, you can see we're making lower lows and we're making lower highs. And we're at the 50 SMA resistance here, which if we get dumped here, guys, this could be a very good play for JDST, but it can also be a good play for JNUG if we end up popping above the 50 SMA and doing something similar to what we did a couple of days ago, which we broke the 50 SMA and we filled up the gap to that 180 SMA, which in this case offers around a 3% profit margin if we fill that gap up. So in that case, JNUG offers a lot of potential, right? JNUG, this could be a nice little fill up to the 180 SMA, and you guys can see that's about 15% profit potential there if we do end up doing that. And the beauty about these inverse ETFs, guys, is let's say we play it perfectly, right? Put some money in JNUG, this one pops, we make 15%, best case scenario here, right? Then we start to get rejected here and start to dump again. Well, we could hop into the inverse, which again is JDST, which goes up whenever GDX is going up, so we can then profit on the downside, which is why I just love of these inverse ETFs, guys. That's how I do it a lot of the time, right? I like playing one, then getting into the other. Very useful tools, right? So before we wrap up the video, let's talk about one more stock here being Tesla. And Tesla right now, they're reporting earnings. I expect it to be very, very volatile after the 23rd, either up extraordinarily or down extraordinarily, right? in terms of the stock's price. And if we end up popping above 260, we may be filling up to 275, which could be very good for the bulls out there, right? Because that's a very key break. And 275, if we break that, that's another key break, right? And I think that could happen if these earnings are positive. Let's say they pull a profit somehow or do something crazy in terms of year-over-year -year numbers. We'll see how that goes. But if something good happens here, this could be popping. But Let's say negative earnings happen. We've seen abysmal earnings from Tesla in the past multiple times. This stock could be falling down to 242, which is this next support that I am seeing. So overall, guys, that's kind of what I'm watching for this upcoming week. And I'm honestly just looking at the overall markets. And I want to see where we're going with these earnings. Earnings are my focus right now. I'm very interested. How are these companies doing? What are they reporting, right? And I'll obviously be talking to you guys on this channel about some of the major companies that I own that I track as well in terms of earnings and uh, yeah just giving you guys my opinion as I always do so don't take any of this as advice to just go buy stocks that I'm watching without doing your own research that's key right you guys know that at this point if you're just watching these videos and buying stocks because I'm looking at them you've got the whole process wrong. You have to understand what you're buying. You have to understand what you're trading um, before even considering to buy it or trade it in the first place because that's absolutely key. It's key, right? So yeah, I'll leave you guys with that. Make sure to do your due diligence, do your own research. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to go down below, smash that like button, consider subscribing, and don't forget to leave a comment. Let me know all of your thoughts on the markets right now, stocks you're watching, ETFs, ETNs, whatever it may be. Let me know down below, and I appreciate you guys so much for watching, and especially if you stuck to the end, you are awesome. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Good luck this week. Peace out.